Hello friends. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you for stopping by and I hope you enjoy it. For my fans and subscribers, welcome back and thank you for the patronage. I deeply appreciate it. Today's topic is going to be Dungeons and Dragons, Dallas Egbert. Not much else I need to say, so let's get on with the video. Because the satanic panic aroused anxieties about brainwashing and cults, it was not a good time to introduce a fantasy role-playing game. In 1979, the LA Times featured an article on Dungeons and Dragons. While not intending to cast D&D in a negative light, it described how children lost interest in ordinary activities and suffered depression when their characters died. The article also described the dungeon master as a cross between God and a psychologist, giving each player as many challenges as possible, as well as having the power to kill players or advance them in the game. On August 15, 1979, Dallas Egbert disappeared from the Michigan State University campus. He was 16 and reportedly a child prodigy. On August 22nd, Egbert's uncle hired a PI named William Deere who showed signs of narcissism. He was looking for a case that would make his career and launch him into stardom. Due to this ambition, Deere associated Egbert's disappearance to D&D with no evidence. He published his memoir, which only heightened pre-existing anxieties of young people being brainwashed by cults or other subversive forces. Even though Dallas showed interest in the game, he never participated. However, he did have mental and emotional problems before he disappeared. In addition, he was trying to come to terms with being a gay man in 1970s America. The night he disappeared, he attempted suicide but survived, after which he went into hiding by staying with friends. Eventually, he ended up in New Orleans where he again tried to poison himself. Deer finally tracked him down in Morgan City Louisiana when Dallas contacted his family after his second suicide attempt. The PI eventually made a statement to the press that D&D had no part in the disappearance, but by then the story had a life of its own. Later on, Dallas ended up succeeding in suicide. Deer led a five-person team to search for Dallas. When they arrived on campus, they learned of a network of tunnels that some students used for live action role playing. Deer initially thought that Dallas had undergone a psychotic break by experience of full immersion in Dungeons and Dragons. However, there were many reasons why this theory was wrong. Dallas had initially played these games in the tunnels, but the organizers asked him not to come back because he was on drugs. Deer also knew that D&D was usually played at a table, not live action. Knowing this, he assumed that live action play constituted an unhealthy obsession with the game. Ellis's family was understandably outraged when Deer published a book, 
Not only had he lied about the circumstances of the case, he also lied about his role. Deer hadn't really found Dallas, after all. Ironically, the book served as a huge marketing campaign for D&D. On the other hand, critics of role-playing games took the story literally. The book also established in the American conscious the lie of cult disguised as game, pitting the innocent gamer against an evil cult leader. Rona Jaffa wrote a fictionalized account of Dallas Egbert, Mazes and Monsters, that CBS turned into a made-for-TV movie. In the book, Robbie Wheeling starts playing Mazes and Monsters in college and finally leaves school because he has had a complete break with reality and thinks he is his character, Hardy. I am not a psychologist or a counselor. However, I did go to school for these things, and I can tell you without a doubt that without a pre-existing condition making someone prone to these types of psychotic breaks, games do not give psychotic breaks. Well, friends, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, press the subscribe button, and if you would like to know when I come out with new videos, hit the bell next to the subscribe button. Also, I would appreciate it if you would share my videos with your friends. My Twitter, Discord, email, and PayPal links are in the description along with the source that I used for this particular episode. Question everything and never be afraid. Here are a couple of videos from my library. If you have not watched them, go ahead and watch them and tell me what you think. Leave comments in the comment section, please. I love hearing from you. Until next time, friends. Goodbye.